Here are some tips on elevating your smartphone cinematography and editing. Holding the phone upside down will allow you to get a deeper and more cinematic angle. And remember, slow motion is always great. 1080p at 120 FPS or higher if you can. Make sure to get a variety of shots and angles. And if you're going to shoot near or in water, get a waterproof case for your phone. If you're out walking around, look for everyday items like water fountains that can become part of your cinematography. Low angles, shot in slow motion, will give you great results. Now, let's explore some of the editing process. For the waterfall scene, the actor walked backwards because the footage was going to be reversed in the edit. By changing the speed to negative 100%, the water now moves up towards the sky as he walks forward. Playing around with speed will add a layer of dynamics to your footage, so don't be afraid to experiment with different cuts and different speeds in your edit. It's not always an exact science, so trying out multiple combinations is sometimes the answer. Try and find parts of the footage that are dynamic or have cool motion or lens flares. It will help the overall cinematic look and feel in the end. Following a pattern of wide shot, medium shot, then close up is a good way to tell a story. The wide shot sets the scene, the medium shot focuses attention, and the close up gives details. The final stage is color correction. Adobe has some great LUTs under the Creative tab in Lumetri Color. Choose a LUT and play around with the intensity, fade, sharpening, and saturation until the desired outcome is reached. Also, don't forget to copy and paste that grade onto the rest of the clips on the timeline by copying the grade, then selecting all the other clips and choosing Paste Attributes. If you happen to be working with a video that has a voiceover, like the one that you just watched, you might want to consider adding captions to the video. Captions are great for users who watch videos with the volume turned off or people that are hard of hearing. Luckily, Adobe has an incredible speech-to-text integration that makes this process simple and easy. First, make sure you're in the captions workspace by selecting it from the top portion of Premiere. Next, choose Transcribe Sequence from the dialog window. Choose your options from the pop-up, like which track your voiceover is on and what language it's in. Then, click Transcribe. Premiere will automatically create an audio transcription and generate a transcript from your video. Read through the script, make sure it all looks accurate, and make any necessary edits to the text. Once you're done, click Create Captions, then choose Create from Sequence Transcript and adjust the properties like line spacing if you'd like. Premiere will then create your captions on your timeline where you can edit them again if you need to, merge to form longer captions, or create a custom formatting and style on the right hand side under edit. Once you've got a style that you like, you can push that style to all the captions on your timeline by pressing the up arrow, or save that style into your project to recall later. Once you're done, you can burn the captions directly into the video upon export, or generate an SRT file to upload on YouTube for closed captions options. 